Greetings from Atoria, I am Mo, Game Corp DX. Game Corp DX is a management game, it came out on the 2nd of October and is by Endless Loop Studio. So, Game Corp DX. Now this game is sort of similar to another game that came out a long, long time ago on the mobile, which was Game Dev Studio, I think it was called, something like that. And the then later game, Game Dev Tycoon, which came out on PC and a bunch of other things as well, I think, afterwards. This game sort of takes from this, I believe. It's called Game Corp DX. It's by Endless Loop Studio, and it sort of gives one aspect of the sort of game studio thing that I actually wanted from Game, Te game Dev Tycoon, which was the idea to be able to develop more than one game at one time you can't do that in game dev cat tycoon and it frustrates me it's like i have all this money why can't i just hire more people but we're going to get into that in a more in a second so firstly how does this fare up as a pc application now i can't look at the options menu so you're going to look at these screenshots instead so the video options are all right actually to be fair you've got vsync and anti-aliasing edge scroll and all nice little options there. That's not too bad for a 2D game, to be honest with you. That's quite a good options menu. The audio sliders are pretty standard. It's just 10 options. There's not too many sounds because it's a 2D game. And the controls are fully rebindable, which for a 2D game, this is a good option. This is what you should be doing. This is a good options menu. I would have liked Borderlands full screen, but that's basically it, really. I mean, what else could I really expect? The art style is very sort of, well, originally it was a Flash game, so the art style is very sort of simplistic and cartoony. It also has workshop support, by the way, on Steam, so this game should have some longevity. It came out on Early Access first, so this game has been developed for a long time with, you know, help with the, com help with the community. I'm going to press continue here, and, you're, uh, and we're going to see what this game actually is. So, I've already finished this game on this one. I finished this game on in this location here. Now, the way this game works is everything happens over the course of a month. So, everyone comes in and then the course of a day is over an entire month. Now, you see my employees coming in here. And they're all going to start going to work. Now, what they're working on is on this project list here. They're working on a AAA title called... Craft Blobbing, which is a simulation game, and a few little smaller games here. I think these two are small games, and these two here are micro games. What does that mean? Well, when you start wanting to make a game in this thing, you have to allocate people to it. So let's say, well, I know we haven't got any idle workers, so I'm going to fast forward a little bit because I think one of my projects is going to finish in a second anyway. You can see that by pressing this button here. I need at least two people to show you uh, this screen. There we go. So I'll publish. I'll publish this game here. Basically, when the project finishes, you can then publish it, decide marketing budget, and with large games, you can polish it. Okay. So I now have three people idle on top here. So we're going to go and make a new project, a micro project. Now, what does all this stuff mean? All this stuff here seems to mean, and I mean seems to mean because it doesn't even tell me what it really means. It's sort of studio fans so it's the fans of these genres that you sort of seem to spend because once i release a triple a title in that genre that number goes straight down to the bottom because i gather we've soaked up all of the love for this title so these are what people are playing people are playing a lot of racing games a lot of horror games and this here is sort of the amount of work and effort you should put into certain things so the first one is code this one is art, and this one is sound, and this one is writing. So you can get away with not having amazing sound in an adventure game, for example, and you can get away with not having amazing writing in a shooter or a racing game, because those games don't generally have any sort of, you know, story or much of anything, really. So we're going to create a... Well, this one over here is quite... This one here's the highest, actually. But this one's the highest, and I'm actually starting to play a on that one, so I want to maximise my studio fans of that one let's go into racing and then we can name the game up here but i'm going to get back to the name the naming system here because this here is a sort of slight criticism of the entire thing really and you then have to choose your scale of your entire game so you get a small a macro game rather which means two people will work on it 
then a small one, four people work on it, medium, 10 people, and the large essentially is AAA, and 20 people work on that game at a certain time. Now I only have three workers remaining, so I'm gonna make a micro game, a micro racing game. So here you can see all of my people, and you know before, in the previous menu, where it showed you how much effort you need to put into things, these bars all correlate to that, if you notice. So I am going to choose a coder and a sound and artist. Now, you might have noticed, by the way, that these people focus on one particular thing. It doesn't matter with a micro game. I'm just wanting these little bars here to actually improve, because that's all I really care about at this point. So we're going to create it. I oh, and you might notice just then, the last screen, you actually have little uh, tasks, little um, what's the word for it? Let's all tools here, and you can train your people to use different things. So at the beginning, they use Unta in United, which I guess means they're using Notepad or something like that, and then Surreal Engine meant to be Unreal Engine, and Try Engine meant to be Cry Engine. There are lots of references to that, like here, Photoshop, Mains, TDS, Mix, these are all references, Trout Loop, Sog, yeah, all these are all references to individual things. So you train your workers to, to do all these things here. Now on the bigger projects, I'm just going to publish this game here, on the bigger projects, you happen to need to have everyone on board with the program that you're using so if someone let's just play that shall we if someone happens to not be trained up in let's say can i even go into this now trained up in let's say the try engine and one person's only trained up into this real engine the entire team has to use the, the you know the, the the earlier thing because one person just can't use the try engine so you should really try to get your colleagues up to the high status there. Now I've, I'm, I'm at the stage now with this AAA title here, where in which the actual game itself is finished. And I'm going to press publish here. Now you see, you've seen a few times me publish small little titles. Now this here is a AAA title, a large one. And with a large one, you get a chance to polish the game up before you actually ship it out. Now this here, this little star thing here, is the quality of the game. And this is one of my criticisms, I'm going to say right off the bat, that this is just... I don't know what it means. I just don't... It's not really context. I mean, you don't you don't get high quality out of a small title. But you get high quality out of a big title. But if a, if a macro game has a high quality, it tends to get higher scores. And if a bigger title has a, has a quality of those macro games, it doesn't get big scores. So I don't even know what the hell this actually is. I don't know how to use it, how to put it into context of anything at this point. So this needs to be worked on. I need to know what it, I need some context. Is this a good quality? I have no idea. It is, I think, because I've got everyone trained up quite well on this title. But you know. So one thing you can do is once you've published, once you've created the game rather, you can polish the game up. And I'm going to do that now. I'm going to publish it with a large budget because I've got I've finished the game so I've got a lot of money. So I'm going to polish this game up. Now you might notice there's loads of desks down here and not much is going on up here. It's because on a large title, what happens is, is people go to their individual workstations down here when they make a title. Well, actually when they make a title, first they go to a table to discuss it, pre-production. Then they go to their workstation to work on the title. And then in the case of a large game, the polish stage happens on these other kinds of workstations up here that cost a bit more money, called a master workstation. And that's where they polish the game up a little bit. And if you polish the game up, presumably it gets better scores and presumably it gets out the door quicker, but obviously with a large amount of cost. I've just forked out 50 million, which is still quite, it's still a size amount of money. It's about an eighth of the money I've got currently. So I'm going to unpause the game and you'll notice ooh, I've got another title release there that's I I don't even know okay one other thing by the way I don't even know if this game is a small game or a micro game or a medium I don't know what it is is it a medium game so this thing here this quality here I don't even know what I'm looking at I'm looking at a small game is this I can't even, I can't have context I need context here I'm going to give it a large budget anyway because why the hell not so, you've seen this screen a few times. This is the score screen. 
Now it shows the quality and the love that you actually get for your studio and then all those reviews here with like some stars. Now as you can find out these here are just randomly generated based on you know there's probably written about 10 statements for level stars 3, 2 and 1 you know and put it all together and they just give you a few little tips down here. However, however this screen here is not Oh wait, hang on a second. Total Crumpets. This is also a reference to Total Biscuits. These are all ref these are yeah. Uh, and uh, I noticed these references, Co Kotako, and I didn't reckon recognise the top one, Total Crumpet then. Either way, this screen here is completely the opposite to Game Dev Tycoon. And in fact I think the entire experience of the game is the complete opposite to Dev Ty Tycoon. The the experience of that game was nostalgia and and the idea of it being sort of focused on individual titles. This game is t is sort of focused on the corporation side of it. This isn't some little. This isn't Mojang. This this sort of game here is EA. This is Activision. This is them. Them. It's it's the corporation. This is it's the over analyze the sort of huge companies making these games. That's what this game actually is. So. You know, before I was on about the name up here, the thing with this game here is I don't have to care about this name because they're going to be working on this game maybe for the, about two, two or three minutes of my playtime. Maybe maybe more than more like five, five to ten, but I don't even need to bother with it because all I need to do is look down this, this little window down here. It tells me, publish this game. Done. Next. I don't care about it. I don't care about the individual games whatsoever. So let's just set up a small game, shall we? Let's go into here, and if you notice that, it highlights their specialization there. We're going to actually, I'm going to change the sound over to this one so this person can level up. Actually, no, prefer more people to be green. You notice here, by the way, it does tell you the tiers as well. Now, you know, I noticed before that you know they have workstations, or two workstations, one at the top, one at the bottom. The another, another thing with all this, by the way, is that there are colleagues, and I can't find the screen. Oh, there it is. Okay, there are colleagues that happen to work on these stations, and you hire them. And when you hire them, you get to know two things: what are their positive traits, and what are their negative traits. And this person has three negative traits. He uses water cools often, li arrives later than usual, and falls asleep randomly. So he has narcissism. Or whatever it's called. That sleeping thing. And this one over here does have a skillful positive trait. And does anyone else have any positive traits? There's one there. And that one there is punctual. Always arrives early than usual. Now these traits here... You realise when you sort of hire a new colleague, which you can't hire a new colleague because I've already hired them all on this level, but they you see all these things here and they they interact with you know how much you're gonna end up paying these people. And you can then, if I actually go into the build menu here, which I'm probably gonna talk about in a second anyway. Personal enhancement. That's building the personal enhancement thing there. You can actually enhance a worker. Seasonal workers that are not doing anything, or rather idle workers, as it says on the top bar there. You can remove their traits, you can clear their specialisation if you want, if you've got two people in one area, which you can see the areas up here. Which is what, by the way, just a minor little thing by the way, I don't like how this bar is, how it is. White text with a slightly whiter background means that most of the time, if I go like on here for example, and there's a level which is in Vancouver I believe, I can't read this top bar, just make it black for me and then have the text white or something, just figure out how to make it so that I can actually read this top bar because it's vitally important to figure out what you're actually going to be doing. Okay, so moving back onto this anyway, you can remove or add a positive trait. You can only add a positive trait if they don't have any negative traits, unfortunately. But you can remove negative traits, so if I wanted to remove negative trait from this worker because he has but he, yeah, Jonathan has three negative traits, so I will move the negative traits off from them. Now, there are a few little uh, things that I was wondering about, to be fair, and the first one is that I have not seen a single female 
person. No one here is actually a female. I don't understand this. Noah, Dave, Luke, yeah. There's all these names here. Not a single person here is actually female. What on earth is... Why can't they just name a person with a female... Like, the artists certainly should... There's just loads of artists, loads of coders, loads of people in this industry that are female. Why are they all male? Or seemingly all male? There's no in particular traits. If we unpause it a second and watch Sam, when, she, when he or she eventually stands up to leave... There's Sam. I, that person did not look in any way like a female in any way, shape or form. Oh, we've got Game Newell there as well, by the way. Do not look like a female anyway at all. That's just a bit weird. Why on earth is everyone a male in there? And that's only one of my criticisms to this game, is that because this game focuses on the corporation side, not on the gaming side, it seems to be sort of devoid of most of its charm. Most of the charm that made me play Game Dev Tycoon and brought me into playing this, it just has a completely different feeling to it. It's also not very much of a strategy game, to be perfectly honest with you. But then again, though, now there was Game Dev Tycoon. That game was just chance. It was There was nothing strategizing. Like, you couldn't strategize with anything in that game whatsoever. There was no possible way. How on earth could you? Okay, I have no idea whether this is a macro game, and that's a really good score, or this is a small game, and that's a really terrible score. No idea. Publish this game, I guess. So that's, that's my main criticism, it's just like, well, it's not so much criticism, but it just feels different than that game does because of what you're forced to do in this game. Uh, I think I've spoken about all the mechanics now on my main criticisms. The game is, well, it was fairly fun, but it was fun for a different reason than those games actually were, to be perfectly honest with you. And I was going to talk about the building mode, yes I was. So... One of the things I did want in Game Dev Tycoon as well, along with more colleagues, is the idea to be able to build your own office. And you can do that. So you can sell things, you can move things around, I can move the statue around, which actually does have an effect if I put the environmental overlay on here. These things have an environmental effect on your colleagues. I should really put something more here, to be fair. That's a bit weird. I should really move these long by one or something. But either way. Those do actually have uh, an effect. That's the specialization one, which tells you who specialized and what, where they're sitting. I'm not sure if where they're sitting even matters, though. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. But you can actually build things. You've got it's quite a limited roster though of things though. It's it's workstations, tables, fridges and the coolers, and a few environmental things, and then just doors and walls. It's not a it's not a large amount of things, and also. When you start, when you start from the beginning, you only have a small area, and you can expand very, in very small areas. Every single year, as well, what month is this? March. You do go to a, an award ceremony, which I guess I'll show you now because I've already got recorded footage of this game, and that will tell you they'll, they'll give you awards and certain things. And as I understand it, it's based upon these charts that I'm looking at right now, but I'm not entirely certain. It seems to be anyway, which is the Studio fans, the highest quality games, number of active games, um, which is the games that are currently been sold, the amount of workers and your and your studio, the way your money works with your awards, and the names of the studios in that like world ceremony as well are all references. So, um, Vlampir is Vlamir and Tell Tell Tale, literally spelled spell a different way as Tell Tale games and. And electronic pop tarts is obviously electronic arts, which is actually quite a good little name there. Which I suppose does give it a little bit more charm, but the, re the main mechanics remove all that charm from this game. And then we get to the f fact that this game is what two pounds, and I played it for quite a while. To be fair, I mean for a two pound game at least, and it's quite fun. It is still fun, it's just fun in a different way than the game Dev Tycoon was fun. It's a different kind of thing. That's my only sort of nuance to this game, I suppose. So they need to sort out the... Oh, one more thing, by the way. They need to sort out their UI drastically. It seems like the game, 
loves left click. It seems that the game was built for iPads, which I think it was on. Might, it might be on like an iOS or mobile at one point because it just doesn't have a concept of right click. The reason why we had to do the options menu via screenshots was because there's no there's no escape button, there's no X button on that options menu because it doesn't have an, a concept of right click anywhere or that kind of thing. So it's a little bit annoying to have to click around all the time. So the UI might need a little bit of tweaking. Game Corp DX is a management game that I found fairly fun, if a completely different tone to the other similar games on Steam and on the market. It's on Steam for £2, $3 or €3, Euros, and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.